Misty just called. She was leaving, going to town. And I was upstairs before we kind of started our day outside with the gardens and cows. And she said the, the, uh, the sheep is out. So we gotta go get it. It's actually just the lamb. So we're gonna move sheep today anyway. So I'm just gonna get her mama out and maybe calm her down and then try to go ahead and move the sheep. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. Get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be like with no distractions. I got him in one net, but it's not closed up. I'm gonna let him kind of graze a little bit. I'll get the other net, hopefully they'll stay in one spot. Right, they are back in. Uh, words of wisdom. Don't freak out. It's so easy to freak out and then then they freak out. Remember, they don't know that they're not in fence. So from experience, because I used to freak out, don't freak out anymore. Because if you don't freak out, they won't freak out. And you just gently move them to the next property. They were moving today anyway. Okay, so we spread the hay. We'll move that big bale over there. In. But we spread all that other stuff that they've been laying in because that's what will help with grass. They're ready to move too. They got a new field to jump over. So they're bellowing at me, telling me, come on boy. It's funny how people, or excuse me, animals, get in repetition like people to where, hey, it's time, move me. <laughs> and usually I'm out by now. And I'm trying to paint a little bit before we start. You don't believe in animal regenerative effort uh, this is this is regenerative agriculture at its best okay so this field is not mine this is right next to my field right here so this was originally the same field that that butts up to the sheep field right over here but I want to show you this this is what's so cool about what we're doing here at our farm so this field <clears throat> actually is a hay field for another person and they cut it they fertilize it and it's a beautiful grass don't get me wrong it's a beautiful field but look at the greenery compared to that field compared to mine mine for two years have not had or almost three years now has not had any fertilization on it other than animals fertilizing it can you see the definitive line look at this this is their field and look at the greenery starting here now that's not planted this is natural grass that comes up that the sheep have helped maintain and actually after i cut my third or second cutting of hay they cut a second cutting of hay and then they didn't do anything else i grazed a whole nother time if you remember when we cut um my weather my, my ram uh donald they grazed that again even back in november they were grazing this and this field was untouched since september so look at the difference look how it's marched uh about march 12th and look how this is a beautiful field but it's not quite greened up it's not quite had uh, 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 a bump to make that grass grow but look at mine unplanted unseeded look at the comparison bill gates eat your heart out bill gates eat your heart out bill gates eat your heart out this is why i'm so passionate about animals working your farm. You cannot tell me that this grass is this green just because it's just here. No, it's because animals have been on it, their fertilization eating organic matter, putting it back into the ground to make this beautiful green grass compared to this field over here, which is pretty, but that's fertilized, unnatural, sitting there with nothing done to it. This is used, beautiful, gorgeous grass with wild onions growing all in it while clover growing all in it. That is regenerative agriculture. And that is what we do on this farm and that's what we're trying to do for all our fields because ultimately that's how we feed America. Sustenance farming, homesteading, regenerative, sustainable, ag, whatever you want to call it. It should be life. And again, it's not one of those things that I tried to be rude, but come on. You hear of all these tech giants and billionaires and politicians talk about 
animal husbandry and animals and all this stuff not being good and not being good for the atmosphere and the climate and the grasses and the world you can't tell me that these cattle and those those sheep that are refeeding the earth refeeding us with their manure is not a good thing bull literally bull mm. speaking of that regenerative agriculture let's move these cows come on hip 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 Josie's become the leader <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> she's getting a little too fast Allie is usually the leader since she's been pregnant she is at the very back of this this pack but that's a good thing because we're moving closer to the dairy stanchion and that's gonna be good for her when she calves I can move her over hip 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 I'm gonna miss their turn so Harley came out and helped good job Har hey guys hey guys getting huge not only is this some Ryan annual grass coming you're starting to see some of that perennial grass grow back up. So that's good, nature grass. And then we're gonna plant some seed actually. And I'm not gonna plant it, I'm gonna plant it. I'm planting it right after them. So as they are on the property, like where they just come off of, I'll plant seed on it and that'll help it grow better too. Finally, the day has come where we are actually seeding our pastures with perennial grass. Your seed um, bags we bought offline. We're gonna give a review on this one too actually seeds and see how it does. I want to see how they do in these raw pastures. So are you helping? You can see this this grass here is starting to come up. This is Bahia grass that's very native to our areas. This was what kind of hay um, that we have and then we spread over their manure, over their pea, and pretty much have uh, I mean some great quality grass coming back through. But you can see there's some spots right there and over here that just need to have a little bit more coverage. So that's why we're gonna spread this seed. Overseeding is what we're gonna do versus retilling. Again, we don't till here, even in our all, all this ground that's raw. We try to just overseed it to build a new seed bed. Well, seeding's done and he's done. Just for the time being, the sheep have the big oak that's actually giving them some shade. Uh, the pigs are kind of in the open because they're making this new uh, garden bed, remember? So I put the sheep shawl in here to give them some uh, some coverage from uh, really the sun, just because the sun's getting kind of warm and I don't want them digging up and not ma making their water fall just to get them cooler. So I put that in there and also uh, some burnt already under, so that's good. That'll give them some shade right there while they're in this uh, spot that doesn't have any natural shade. Sheep have this big old tree and they're sitting on it. The whole thing is almost under shade. Look at this grass growing back. This is where the sheep uh, normally rotate. Now I will say this, we're, we may be changing some things up. We may be putting the sheep back just in the paddock that we showed you earlier that's doing so well and rotate them. And this may become another cattle field. And uh, for us, the cows are a bigger asset on our farm than really everything when it comes to permaculture you want to make sure that you are designing your farm around what you're looking for to be utilized as the asset the most for us that's cows by far dairy and beef uh, and we love beef we love meat eat and I love butter love milk everything that a cow gives and uh, to me they give back to the soil so much don't get me I don't know what day how many days is it been? day five day five day five so much better so we're gonna just stick a band-aid on this this time and call it done we've got some great additions we're gonna show you right quick uh it's kind of dusty from the sheetrock mess and uh it's still raw but we're gonna walk through it right quick So you can see that I've got a glowing light behind me. Of course, you see the shadow. We still don't have lights up here. We have electrical run for it, but again, we're doing sheetrock work and also some woodwork. So we're using these beautiful spotlights. So you're seeing what's getting done. Now let's go back to where the stairs come up from the house. Oh, what a mess. Oh, that's what it looks like. Look at that. Got piles of sheetrock dust everywhere. So we've got this here. 
finished. It is completely ready to paint. We've got to clean up before we paint and then we're going to start priming all this. Now this is the foyer that we're coming in here. This is where our office is going to be. This is where we'll do most of our editing and things like that. We're going to make it to where it has uh, kind of functionality with all our cameras and all. Uh, and also just some of my business work. So we will go up here. It'll be a space away from all the mess that we have downstairs. And, uh, and so it's, it's come together. It just needs priming. Now let's talk about this. It gets a little dark over here, but this is another little foyer area that we have just to pass through basically to the bathroom. Now the bathroom you can't really see, but now all the top is finished there. We simply got to finish uh, putting the walls up here, as you can see. Got the sink ready to go in. Got the shower over there. So it's really looking good. We've got the air units in. We've got these installed. We've not got them on because of all the sheetrock dust that's going on. But um, yeah, this this part of the, the renovation is really done other than just painting. Once we paint, then we'll worry about the floor and all that details. Now for the main bedroom and closet. Now this room will be wrapped in shiplap. So that's why henceforth you don't see anything on the walls. We're still waiting for our shiplap to come in. Once it comes in, we'll run it as well. It will stay white in this room and then we're gonna put a darker floor. The two closets for the boys. We've got a pass through, emergency exit like we talked about. So there's two ways to get up and down if need be. So we've got all this ready too. Just need some paint in here and some wood in here. With me.